So welcome to our second research seminar of, of the day, uh, Thursday, February 8th. Again, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Um, that is Professor Maria Zubritska, who is an associate professor in the Department of Literary Theory and Comparative Studies in the Faculty of Philology at Ivan Franco National University of Lviv. Um, since September 2019, Pani Maria has been the Rector's Advisor for International Affairs and Project Development at her university. Um, and between June 2014 and September 2019, she was Vice Rector for International Affairs at Ivan Franco National University. Um, Dr. Zubritska's research interests include re reader response theory and reader-oriented approaches to literary texts cultural and literary hermeneutics, and methodologies of literary studies. And her talk for us today is entitled Slavic Literary Studies, Rethinking slash Reconstructing, Mission Impossible? Question mark. So an intriguing title, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Um, Dr. Zubritska, the floor is yours. We can't hear you, Pani Maria. Uh, dear Professor Phillips, thank you very much for uh, presenting me. And uh, uh, my uh, presentation today will be focused on a question for a million dollars, exactly. It is very debated every day in my uh, professional field. I received a lot of um, letters uh, and asking about comments, what is going on on uh, uh, Slavic literary studies uh, area after the invasion of Russia. Let me share my uh, screen, just a moment. Okay. As I point, uh, pointed in a brief description of my presentation, I will focus on three blocks of uh, problems. The first problems, the new zeitgeist, the new spirit of times, and the response of West uh, academia, Western universities, and Ukrainian universities on this the new uh, zeitgeist, uh, the new spirit of time. Uh, the second uh, scope of problems is Ukrainian response and Ukrainian vision, Ukrainian discourse uh, about uh, the necessity to reform or to reconstruct uh, uh, Slavic literary studies or to develop a new model of Ukrainian studies and uh, somehow disseminate this uh, model of Ukrainian studies in parallel uh, way. And the third uh, uh, scope of, of question will be focused on um, um, previous experience, because it was not only Ukrainian response after the collapse of Soviet Union, Polish, uh, famous Polish intellectuals, uh, writers, uh, and uh, people who teach at Western universities uh, discussed uh, about Polish studies, Polonia uh, studies at Western University and how they can use the collapse of Soviet Union to build a new well-balanced model of uh, uh, Slavic studies. You see uh, the article of Oksana Zabushko. I will start uh, uh, my presentation from this article because Oksana Zabushko widely commented and uh, uh, in her article and in her comments, uh, she put em uh, emphasis on Russian literature as a camouflage net for Russian ta uh, tanks. And uh, um, he stressed uh, 
that we should reread uh, Russian literature after uh, the Bucha massacre. Please see, it is April to 20, uh, 2022, two, uh, one and a half months after uh, uh, full-scale uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine. Um, and uh, Oksana Zabushko was trying to uh, present her version uh, how should the Slavic literary studies uh, uh, after this war? Uh, and the uh, version was that it should be a well-balanced model. Slavic uh, studies as area studies should be umbrella for all Slavic literatures because not only Russian big literature, but all Slavic literature, uh, literatures are great. So, after the uh, when after the invasion of Russia, uh, the question was next: How to teach and what to teach? If we would like to offer multi-voicedness as a model for Slavic literary uh, studies uh, after the war, we should to redesign and to think about uh, the way, in what way we should build our map road uh, for uh, a new model of Slavic uh, literary studies. Uh, development. And what was the response uh, of uh, Western Academia, Western University? How they see or uh, do, do not want uh, to see reshaping and reconstructing a, a long-standing tradition to develop Slavic uh, literary studies through the prism of dominance of Russian literature and the culture. Are they ready to rethink through the correlation center periphery, periphery uh, uh, very complex uh, uh, questions? And uh, please, uh, I would like to uh, uh, tell you that uh, Last year, uh, keynote speaker, uh, uh, Professor uh, Vitaly Chernetsky, he was a keynote speaker uh, uh, at uh, Indiana University Shevchenko Conference. He talked about epistemological injustice. And uh, to his mind, uh, the process of building well-balanced model of Slavic studies development will be long. Uh, it will take a lot of time, a lot of efforts, and there should be a good will of people who are engaged into uh, teaching, into uh, re uh, researching uh, Slavic literatures, uh, uh, etc. And uh, all Ukrainian uh, intellectuals at this moment put the questions. How we can avoid in the future after the, uh, the war uh, to avoid all kind of scientific, cultural, linguistic imperialism under the umbrella of uh, Slavic studies? What should be done? And the response is, um, uh, before I would like to quote, uh, you see uh, James Crump to uh, his editorial notes for Canadian Slavonic papers last year uh, about decolonization. He wrote that it is not the first time that we are coming back to the term decolonization. 
the first appeared on the pages of uh, Canadian Slavonic uh, papers in 1968, following the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia. But there was no any uh, effect on uh, uh, academia, Western academia. Nobody wished to change uh, anything in a Slavic studies uh, area. I would like to uh, put your attention on uh, 55th annual convention of the Association of Slavic East European and Eurasian Studies under the uh, motto diversity and interdisciplinarity. Uh, because uh, uh, in uh, my uh, presentation, I will focus on this kind of interdisciplinarity, how we could uh, move uh, uh, in possible way of uh, develop a well-balanced model of Slavic uh, literary studies from the point of multi-voicedness of uh, 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 this field. Edita Boyanowska, professor of Slavic languages and literature at Yale University. Uh, she is the author of the um, article, I will uh, focus on it as well, on uh, uh, Pushkin to, to the splendors of uh, Russia. Uh, as a new interpre uh, interpretation of uh, Russian classic of uh, 19th century. So, Edita Buyanovska mentioned that really we have now possibility for interest in other than uh, Russian uh, literature and culture uh, uh, areas. East European and students are interested as well. Um, the second point, Dr. Nikolata Makovitsky, she is director of the Department of uh, Russian and East European Studies at the University of Oxford. She as well stressed that students are interested in decolonizing of Russia and the East European studies, and greatly interested in what might have formerly been seen uh, as the USSR. And re-evaluation of the relationship between the periphery of the center. So as we see, good words, good will, good intentions. The last quotation is uh, by, uh, from uh, uh, Maria Mogilner. Uh, she is a famous Russian historian, uh, moved to United States. And she mentioned about the centering dominant literary canon. Uh, Again, it was one and a half years ago. We will move with uh, Timothy Snyder. Timothy Snyder in his brilliant uh, course of lecture on Ukraine uh, put emphasis why Ukraine is so important right now. Uh, and everything what is happening in Ukraine at this moment is very important uh, for European uh, history as well. Another uh, point uh, and another position, Oksana Dudko, her article, Gate Crashing European and Slavic Area Studies, and uh, Ukrainian studies transform the field. And with a sense of humor, uh, she wrote that Ukrainian studies are like an 
airplane passenger assigned to the seat European studies and the Russian studies and the seat that happens to be occupied by East European studies, which have not traditionally uh, a Ukraine. How can we make room for everyone at a time when humanities are like aircraft legroom, are shrinking? A huge question, how really we can develop Ukrainian uh, studies at this moment. Uh, Ukrainian uh, discourse on uh, decolonizing Slavic literary studies started after the uh, invasion, uh, a full-sized uh, invasion of Russia to Ukraine. And uh, in Ukraine, we have a very good uh, effective institution, Ukrainian institution. They have a, a special uh, link, uh, just to show you, um, on, sorry, I don't know why. Uh, uh, focused on uh, decolonization and uh, they selected all articles day by day, month by month uh, in uh, 2022 uh, on this uh, link uh, written e by Ukrainian and uh, uh, foreign researchers, uh, professors, translators, uh, and uh, uh, etc. Professor Andrei Zayarniuk, uh, he is from Lviv. Currently, he teaches history at the University of Winnipeg, Canada. And his article, a historian as enables, uh, enablers uh, historiography, imperialism, and uh, legitimization of Russian aggression. He wrote with a lot of argumentation why we should to reread the Russian literature, Russian classical literature, why we should to revisit uh, 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 history courses, because to his mind, many Western scholars enabled Putin aggression and against uh, Ukraine, reproducing and normalizing imperialist ways of seeing post-Soviet space. And to his mind, exactly this war is a moment of the truth that we should, uh, if we would like to change uh, something, we should to do this. I just uh, very briefly show you, I will uh, share my presentation with articles in English about uh, decolonizing Slavic studies, Ukrainian point of view, Ukrainian response. Um, and uh, very, very uh, um, hot discussion because uh, around three articles from Pushkin to Putin, articles written by uh, Volodymyr Yermolenko, brilliant Ukrainian uh, intellectuals for foreign uh, policy. Uh, the second, Decolonizing the Mysterious Soul of the Great Russian Novel by Lyubov Terehova. And uh, um, Zeitgeist, Dostoevsky as a Reason for War. Um, you will have a possibility to read when I will share uh, my presentation. Volodymyr Yermolenko exactly put the question on the uh, necessity to reread Russian classic uh, literature, particularly 19th uh, uh, century. Uh, There is also articles about uh, 
war and peace of uh, by Tolstoy and uh, why this is quotation why in the eyes of Western intellectuals does Russian literature have an indulgence in moral purity and aesthetic inviolability while imperial discourse is tolerated. Uh, this is an um, article somehow related with Edita Boyanovska. Uh, uh, I mentioned here uh, quotation at the very beginning that he is trying to change your course on uh, uh, Tolstoy, uh, Tolstoy's War and Peace, um, which was the most popular at Yale College, but the, uh, during the year when uh, uh, the war started, uh, Professor Buyanovska said that he changed uh, direct uh, 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 redesign your course with emphasis on uh, direct connection between the novel and what is in the news, using the text and uh, to the uh, current uh, social political issues. Uh, it is about just a lot of I will uh, um, since I have not too much time just for balance um, uh, Mikhail Shishkin a Russian uh, Swiss writer and author of the, um, more than dozen books uh, uh, reacted on uh, this Ukraine uh, discourse of Ukrainian uh, intellectuals about uh, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy. Uh, don't blame Dostoevsky. And his uh, version is the, ro the road uh, to the Bucha massacre leads not through Russian literature, but through the suppression. Uh, the, uh, or book bends against Fyodor Dostoevsky and Bulgakov, Vladimir Nabokov, and uh, Joseph Brodsky, Anna Akhmatova, and Platonov. The history of Russian culture is one of desperate resistance, and uh, etc. Uh, but it is only one not so uh, uh, supportive uh, voice. Uh, I couldn't find at least other Russian intellectuals uh, who are trying uh, to build counter argumentation for uh, uh, Ukrainian articles. Uh, we have at least five or seven articles why Putin, why Pushkin, Dostoevsky, and Tolstoy are carriers of imperialistic uh, discourse. Uh, now, it was Ukrainian response uh, to the uh, war, to the uh, need to decolonize the Slavic uh, studies. Still, we have a lot of uh, articles uh, around uh, uh, the question how should uh, Ukrainians move with developing of Ukrainian studies. And uh, um, during our conference, which we uh, organized at our university on November uh, 2022, uh, we were trying to find uh, a some case studies uh, to discuss possible possible ways of interdisciplinary approach to teaching literature, Slavic literature. And uh, I will focus on Professor Oksana Zera. First, we, uh, she delivered the speech, Shevchenko's deconstruction of Pushkin, 
Caucasian and Petersburg narration, inward and outward reception. And in parallel way, you will see a Polish interpretation inventing anti-imperial poetic discourse, Adam Mickiewicz and Taras Shevchenko, uh, and, uh, uh, and Taras Shevchenko against Alexander Pushkin in the Tsar's shadow. Um, we have two, uh, we have double vision. We have colonial discourse and anti-colonial discourse. And uh, uh, we were trying to show during the conference that maybe if we, we, uh, we will think about redesigning of courses on uh, Slavic literature, maybe it is the way how we can teach at least the Romanticism, Adam Mickiewicz, uh, uh, Pushkin, Taras Shevchenko, the Slavic Triangle, and the comparative approach and to show uh, uh, colonial and anti-colonial discourses. You see uh, um, the another uh, case, how we can teach uh, uh, Slavic literature of 19th century. It is about uh, uh, Shevchenko and Pushkin, about uh, to the slanderers uh, of Russia, and Edita Boyanovska, Pushkin's to the slanderers of Russia, uh, Miroslav Shkandri, Russia and the Ukraine literature and the empire from Napoleonic to postcolonial times, and see in November 1944, Clarence Manning, Shevchenko, and Pushkin uh, to discourse to opposite uh, uh, to opposite discourse. So it is uh, uh, from another point of view how we can to approach to the interdisciplinary uh, within the framework of uh, uh, Slavic studies. Um, and Elif Batuman, PhD in comparative uh, literature from Stanford University, in her beautiful article, rereading Russian uh, classic in the shadow of the Ukraine war. Exactly, Elif Batuman is doing the same what proposed Ukrainian uh, um, intellectuals. From Oksana Zabushko, we are Volodymyr Yermolenko, Ostap Ukrainis, etc., etc. We should to reread a Russian classic because with this beautiful literary work, we see, we hear this imperialistic voice and discourse, and we should somehow to react. Uh, and now the third uh, part of my presentation, very briefly, Polish experience. 30 years ago, uh, Polish uh, famous Polish professors, uh, Stanislaw Baranczak, uh, he was a professor at Harvard University, Daniel Bouha at Paris, uh, Bogdana Carpenter, Maria de la Pierre, Victor, er Victor Erlich, uh, Czesław Milos, Eva Thompson. Uh, I said Eva Thompson because today in Ukraine we have a new edition of Imperial Knowledge, uh, Ukrainian title, Trubaduri Imperii, uh, with preface of uh, Eva Thompson. She as well discussed 30 years ago how 
we could develop how Polish intellectual could develop a new well-balanced model of teaching of Slavic literature. You can find this discussion who read in Polish, uh, uh, you will see, but what lessons we could learn from this 30 years ago discussion. As, uh, you see uh, Eva Thompson, uh, it should be remarked that there is no Russian translation of this book. There is no uh, even Belarusian. And the lessons learned from this discussion 30 years ago. Department of Slavic uh, Studies were set up and developed a kind of Russicist uh, after the collapse of Soviet political imperialism. And uh, they propose their model, what should be done from the side of Polish government, Polish non-profit organization, private persons with uh, 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 funds, how they could uh, uh, help to develop uh, uh, Polish studies. State support of the promotion of Polish language and culture. Institutional chairs and dubbed chairs. And some of these ideas currently work. Making Polish literature widely known, not only in narrow academic circles. Narrowing the gap between translating Polish literature and la uh, Russian literature. Institutional responsibility and individual intellectual responsibility of the expert, experts for development of Polish studies. I like very much this. Uh, the last point, institutional responsibility and individual responsib intellectual responsibility of the experts for development of uh, Polish uh, studies. Uh, so, uh, it was a big dream of Polish intellectual to change everything after the collapse of uh, uh, Soviet Union. But they were quite pessimistic that this process will be long lasting. It will take a lot of time, money, and efforts if we, they would like to change. You currently see what have been done. Polish chair at Columbia University USA Fundacja na rzecz nauki polskiej uh, and the Polish Studies Endowment Committee at the University of uh, Washington. It is not so much, but still they managed to change something. And uh, I would like to finish my presentation just to encourage uh, all my colleagues, as it is said, uh, colleagues from inst institution responsible for dissemination knowledge about Ukraine and producing the knowledge about Ukraine, just to be ready for this. It is not sprint, it is marathon, and to be ready for this long lasting marathon of changing something in Slavic literary areas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Zubritska for this provocative, I would say, and a very, very timely um, presentation. I see we have uh, a question or a comment already from our colleague, Yulia Kornichuk. So Yulia, please take it away. Hey, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for, for such an interesting presentation. And uh, my question would be uh, a kind of question of outsiders. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if uh, if if it be, uh, if it would be uh, not appropriate. But um, uh, at least from my 
my experience, uh, different Slavic nations were differently present, presented in Slavic studies. Uh, Russian studies were uh, definitely the major, but those countries which uh, managed to create this institutional framework, as you mentioned, Polish Institute, for example, or uh, Czech Republic also created Czech institutes. So those countries more or less were uh, present at least in uh, on this international radar. But when we talk about Slav Slavic studies, uh, the network is much wider. For example, you and your presentation mostly uh, con was uh, concentrating on uh, Russian studies, on uh, Polish studies and Polish experience, which is uh, really important. But um, as a knowledgeable reader, at least, uh, somehow in Ukraine, I can't mention, I can't uh, remember, I don't know, translation of um, Montenegrin literature or Macedonian literature. And that's another essential part of studies. I mean, we're usually concentrating uh, our attention on Eastern Europe, on uh, more or less Central Europe, but depending on the country, for example, Slovak literature, I'm not sure if it's present as well as Polish literature in Ukrainian uh, in Ukrainian uh, in Ukrainian public space. Uh, can Slavic studies manage to cover it all? Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the question and uh, in your uh, in your assessment, how these different elements of Slavic studies present in Ukrainian literature from, from your knowledge? I mean, Eastern Slavs, uh, Western Slavs, and Southern Slavs, because I guess a Balkans is, uh, it's a huge gap. It's a huge, uh, uh, huge black, uh, black or white, uh, simply gap in, in, in our knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good questions. I will start from our university. Our university is the only university in Ukraine and maybe in the world where we teach all Slavic languages, all. We cover all Slavic words. And it is tradition from uh, Habsburg Empire. Uh, but it is very costly. It is uh, very uh, uh, difficult to develop uh, keeping the quality because when you invite native speakers, instructors of Macedonian language, uh, uh, not all embassies are so supporting and we are successful in three direction, Czech literature and language, Croatian literature and language, Serbian literature and uh, language. Every year we uh, have um, uh, students who study Polish, Czech, uh, Croatian, Serb, and Slovenian language. With support of the uh, embassies of these countries. Other languages we are trying to teach as the second or the third foreign language, the Slavic languages, uh, because it is uh, 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 it is rather about curriculum uh, design, about translation. Needless to say, Polish li uh, literature is represented very well in uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, language. Czech literature, it is a second Croatian literature. We have a brilliant translator, Ala Tatarenko, who translates from uh, Serbian uh, uh, language. But there are still some tension during the war with uh, Serbian universities. You know that Belgrade, University of Belgrade uh, support Putin's uh, and uh, uh, there is truth, and uh, we wrote a letter that we have agreement and we would like to cooperate, uh, but we suspended some uh, courses on Serbia on the fault of the Serbian side. Uh, so in Ukraine, it is not so bad, uh, but when we compare 
we should uh, be aware that um, it is not about the big, best uh, 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 literature. It is about the presence of this literature on the map of world literature. How many texts of Slovak poets and writers are presented on the history of world uh, literature? We have courses, uh, comparative courses on Slo Slovenska literatura, Slovak literature. We teach these courses for students of Slavic departments as well as for Ukrainian philology. And some students from foreign language uh, faculty could choose these uh, optional courses on Slavic literature. And it depends from the taste and choice of students. We offer, we have uh, courses. Is it po popular, uh, popular or not? It is another question. Uh, so in Ukraine, the situation is such. In, at, at the West, when we are talking about well-balanced uh, model of multi-voicedness under Slavic studies umbrella, it is a very complex question because funds, because uh, courses because tradition uh, uh, long standing, and you cannot change at once everything. You should move, move step by step in cooperation with embassies, with private funds, uh, with uh, some certificate courses. Uh, there was no time, if you allow, I, I will show you uh, one slide. Uh, in just a moment. Uh, let me share. Uh, it is very important to understand uh, 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 this intention. It is last question. Uh, at uh, United Kingdom, uh, we have um, Ukrainian Institute. Uh, and the Ukrainian Institute started online courses, Ukrainian for speakers of other Slavonic languages. A lot of our teachers of our universities from faculty of foreign languages, as well as uh, faculty of philology are engaged into this initiative. It is a very small step, but to my, my mind, it is very important just to start uh, to negotiate and to cooperate with uh, all Slavic languages and literature. And it is very complex, uh, Slovakia and Hungary, and uh, uh, Shandor Patefi, originally born in Sla uh, Slovak family, is a good uh, illustration how we could and should to reread uh, East European uh, literature uh, through the lens of decolonization. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny Maria. Um, are there questions, comments? Yes, please, Svetlana. Sorry, thank you. Thank you so much, Pani Maria, for your interesting and thought-provoking lecture. And I always enjoy your lecture, by the way. So uh, my question for you, actually two questions, uh, but they are all the same. It's a, the same uh, one million question, uh, one million dollar question. So what what is your definition of decolonization and what does decolonization mean to you? Thank you. Uh, I will uh, back to my presentation uh, because maybe uh, too much information and I I like very much this definition uh, of uh, decolonization. 
and we should uh, just a moment decolonization is first of all a process of the mind in which both colonizer and colonized together with bystanders must recognize and overcome imperialistic patterns of thought. I like very much this definition and I am very supportive of this, uh, to this definition. Yeah, thank you very much. I like it very much as well. Thank you. When we are talking about decolonization, I proposed for Shevchenko conference decolonizing Ukrainian literary studies. We have a huge job um, uh, in the future to be done in order to free our mind from this uh, pattern of thoughts. We should to think about Crimean literature, Crimean uh, culture. A lot, a lot of very controversial issues we should to, uh, overcome. Thank you, Pani Maria. I um, really enjoyed your talk as well. I find the concept of multi-voicedness especially useful. So thank you for introducing that. That's something to definitely um, think about and, and think about how to uh, implement multi-voicedness in everything that we do, really. Um, I had a question for you in terms of uh, multidisciplinarity. And I, I, it seemed to me that on the one hand, your presentation was framed around the ideal, the idea of multidisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity. Um, but on the other hand, most of the examples that you gave were about literature and literary studies. So I just wondered if you could work out for us a little bit in more detail um, how you see interdisciplinarity coming in to this picture that you've that you've presented. Uh, first of all, uh, we discussed uh, a, a few case studies in what direction we could move during the international conference. I like very much two other case studies, not only Pushkin, Mitskevich, and Shevchenko. I much more like. Uh, uh, feminist literature or uh, women writing in Slavic literature in 19th century or at the end of 19th and beginning of the 20th century, uh, women writings in Slavic literature. It could be open for gender uh, feminist study, uh, etc. We have a, a, we also have a good uh, had a good presentation uh, of Bible uh, uh, Bible um, uh, motifs uh, in uh, Slavic literature. How we can teach Bible studies from the Slavic point of view, and what kinds of uh, uh, famous Bible uh, sujet, sorry, plot uh, 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 are developed in different uh, uh, Slavic uh, languages. Uh, we had a good uh, presentation. It is uh, uh, other and music in literary works. You know that Lesa Ukrainka wrote for a songs and published with notes, uh, but currently we have text without music. But within the text you have uh, melody number one, melody number two, melody 21. You read the text, you see the melody, you didn't see the notes. So literature and mu music. Uh, Olha Kubelanska. Uh, it was also uh, a very good presentation uh, 
fine arts and the literature. How fine arts are represented in Ukrainian and Slavic impressionism. Uh, and uh, at the end of 19th and the beginning of 20th century. So uh, a few case studies which were presented during this conference could be useful for opening windows and doors and inviting colleagues from other faculties and announce this course for other departments and other faculties. I see, thank you so much. That really clarifies things for me. And those are really rich examples. I'm wondering, have the uh, proceedings from that conference uh, been published or will they be published? Unfortunately, uh, as far as I know, I should clarify with Dr. Irena Odrychivska and Oksana Zera. They were responsible, uh, but there is no uh, uh, proceedings. But it looks like there is um, Zappes audio, mm -hmm. so, sorry, uh, recording of this conference. If there is access to the recording, I kindly will send you. Wonderful. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'll just mention you you mentioned uh, interdisciplinarity and feminist studies, and uh, you mentioned Oksana Zabushko. And I'm very happy to let everyone know that uh, Oksana Zabushko has agreed to be one of our keynote speakers at the 2024 um, Indiana University Tara Shevchenko Ukrainian Studies Conference. So we're delighted that um, she'll be with us. Yeah. Yes. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions, comments, points for discussion uh, for Professor Zubritska? I guess we have a question in a chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't okay. see it. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, uh, Professor Honchorenko, would you let me to read your question out? Okay, uh, oh, I can read it out. Okay, so um, Professor Honchorenko says, thank you so much. I have the question about the new project of the Global History of Ukraine, launched by Snyder, Plohi, Horitsak, and other well-known cultural figures, including researchers and journalists, some of whom do not know Ukrainian. What do you think? Could this be an example of a decolonizing project with a correct interpretation of Ukrainian sources, including literature? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know that we have a very hot debate in Ukraine regarding to what extent uh, these people uh, from around the world can propose a new version of Ukrainian literature. But there is another as well uh, initiative. British Council published uh, um, handbook for a Ukrainian museum, how to um, organize and present the history of Ukraine uh, at Ukrainian museum. Uh, this uh, handbook, uh, it was announced uh, months ago that this handbook will be presented on March or on April. Uh, how to present? I will send you. Uh, I will send to everyone uh, a, a link because it, mm -hmm. it was an announcement mm -hmm. at on British Council uh, website uh, about this uh, uh, handbook and the same approach how people from outside can represent our history to the world. Uh, another question is about Pinchuk, uh, because uh, this is uh, uh, initiative has been uh, supported by Pinchuk, Victor Pinchuk. And uh, it is not uh, tolerated uh, by the part of Ukrainian society. And I should mention that the Ukrainian Institute in London, as well as Department of Ukrainian Language at uh, Cambridge University, 
has been supported by Firtash as well. We should remember this, uh, but uh, the idea works. I don't know how uh, how interpret uh, how how react uh, on this, but at this moment, every initiative for dissemination the knowledge about U Ukraine and producing a new version of Ukrainian history, particularly where I see Timothy Snyder, I hope it will work for dissemination for uh, of our history, in my personal point of view. Because different people, but with a very high reputation, academic reputation, Serhii Plokhi, Timothy Snyder, Maybe Yaroslav Hritsak. There are different uh, discussion around the Yaroslav uh, Hritsak uh, position, but he's uh, to condemn uh, the past. His books and his history are translated into English, Polish, and other languages. And uh, unfortunately, we have not a lot of sources on history of Ukraine. Uh, translated from Ukrainian to uh, other foreign languages. So it might be uh, a good uh, initiative. And I do hope that it will work for um, promoting of uh, history of Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. And I will send the British Council uh, for uh, about the uh, handbook for Ukrainian museum. Thank you, Fanny Maria. Uh, uh, for me, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Professor Huncherenko, but for me, embedded in your question was was also this this question of if someone does not know the Ukrainian language, can that person be be involved seriously in a project um, of decolonizing? Um, how we think about history and and sort of um, can that person be an expert in Ukraine, so to so to speak? So I guess that's part of part of the question too. But uh, in my presentation, because of the lack of time, it is the same question about Slavic languages. Ukrainian intellectuals put emphasis if you cannot read in Russian. If you don't know very good uh, Russian history, you cannot be an expert. It is not uh, how to say. Mm -hmm. You can teach, uh, but you are not fluent in this language, yeah? Mm -hmm. And what is better, to be well informed or to promote? Mm -hmm. it, it is a question. It is question in between is when you are looking for in between. Thank you. Any final comments, questions? Let me. Mm -hmm. Ludmilla. Ludmilla? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so uh, Maria, thank you very much for your informative presentation, especially where I liked uh, almost the last slide entitled "What to Teach, How to Teach." Yeah. So, and uh, concerning the Russian literature and Russian culture, everything concerning it. So, what uh, would you recommend? What would you advise uh, to teach and how to teach everything uh, concerning Russia today? Million dollars question again. Question for a million dollars. Today we have a session. Question oh, for a million dollars. Uh, I am not sure that I am a good expert uh, uh, to be able to answer. I was trying to uh, share uh, all ideas which are circu circulated among uh, uh, experts. Uh, Everyone currently is trying to understand how to move forward. What is the next? 
everyone aware that it is not easy to cancel one and propose the ad hoc another uh, one. It is not the way. We think that academic approach, it is real, uh, Nadine's reliability, yeah, uh, of uh, method uh, of teaching a uh, 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 very well uh, informed person with uh, a good background, with uh, knowledge about Slavic la language or Slavic literature. Only such persons with this background and understanding what is going on around can propose uh, 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 well-balanced. We can close our eyes, do not see the war, do not see uh, that uh, really something could be changed and rewritten. But it is not intellect, uh, intellectual courage to be intellectual. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, I can't answer in proper way for your... I am not ready yet. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zubritska, again, for a wonderful presentation. Very thought-provoking. Lots of great questions emerged. Um, something that all of us will continue to think about, I know, um, and, and do our part um, to, to promote Ukrainian culture, history, language, society, everything um, in, in the best way possible and, and using multidisciplinary approaches, which is the focus of our, our program um, this year. So thanks Thank everyone. Um, our time together is coming to an end, unfortunately, but we